Hello, welcome to uh, part two of a two-part video on the replacement of broken firing pins in brake action guns. In part one, I started with an introduction just talking about the types of guns and also how to tell when a gun has a broken firing pin. I then went on to uh, describe replacing the firing pins in external hammer side lock guns and also internal hammer side lock guns. In this video I will be uh, continuing on and talking about box lock guns and single barrel external hammer type guns. If you've got either of those two and you're watching it for that reason it may still be worth you going back and watching the introduction to part one just to get the context of what we're talking about before you go on to the specific gun you've got. Right, now we come to a box lock gun. Uh, now box locks are probably the most common type of both side by side and over and under double gun that you'll come across both in older guns and in modern guns. Most modern guns are, are a box lock of some type. Um, Box lock basically means that, as you'll notice, we no longer have the separate lock um, here, which obviously had all the mechanism on it. What we've got now is this kind of frame system, which you see has a variety of pins in it. And on these pins pivot the, the parts of the lock, which function. So you've got hammers, sears, your triggers are on the trigger plate, back here um, and yeah um, I'll, I'll put up a picture of a typical box lock um, now they vary a lot the very early ones the Anson and Dealey the original box locks actually had hammers with points on them sort of like a revolver which actually operated in a slot in the action so they didn't have separate strikers or firing pins So, you know, you could have the tip of, a, of one broken off, but it would mean either having a whole new hammer made or possibly nowadays, you know, having it build up with a TIG welder and then filed back to shape. Um, however, there are some, late, a, lot of, um, a lot of box lock guns now actually have, um, they still have hammers, but they have strikers and uh, removable strikers which can be replaced and that's what this one's got as well however this one has a completely different um, system called disc set strikers and i'll show you what that means so here we are with this victor serasqueta box lock gun it's a box lock ejector and my stepson bought it he was actually very lucky to get this gun because he got it very cheap at a gun shop because it had a broken firing pin and of course people think oh I'm not buying that you know I'll have to pay a gunsmith a fortune to get it fixed um, so he bought it and uh, we immediately fixed that firing pin this is a couple of years ago so I've actually got some footage of that um, of doing that um, but now it's got another broken firing pin I'm presumably on the other side I think so um, we're going to, we're actually going to, going to take the firing pin out of this gun. The difference with this one is it's actually got disc set strikers. So I'll just lift this up and let's have a look at this, the breech faces of this gun. Now where are we? Just let me get this, I'll just lift up the camera. Now, so you can see that there's, you've got your holes with the firing pins in them. Now that's a bit of, well for a start, before we go any further, do you notice any, I hadn't even looked at this gun, I must have only got it off my stepson last night. Do you notice anything about this gun? On the right you can see the tip of the firing pin, well on the gun's right, our left, you can see the tip of that firing pin, that's the one we replaced. And there's something dodgy going on on the other side, you see there's, you can't see anything there, there's just a hole. So it seems like the tip of the firing pin's broken off and is lost, I suspect, but we'll soon see. But the other thing you'll notice is 
you've got those round circles with two holes. So those are actually the discs of the disc set striker system. So they're designed, as I said, for to be easily removed so that the firing pins can be replaced easily. So that's what we're going to do. Now, of course, you know, if you bought one of these guns, even this gun here, probably, it may have actually come with, um, with the tool, you know, a proper tool to actually remove the strikers, but, uh, you know, we didn't, we didn't get it. And of course, all the original English guns that came with this set of strikers would always come with the removal tool in the case, you know, they would have come in the leather case with all the accessories and stuff cleaning rod and all that stuff all right so there is the disc as you can see it's a simple disc and it looks like there's actually a spring in there it's a little bit stuck it's in fact it might even be a little bit mangled i think the springs were all right when we did them last time but just having a broken firing pin might have and then at the end going missing might have Actually, oh, there it is there, yeah, so it is a little bit mangled that. Um, it's been mangled, it wasn't mangled when we did it a couple of years ago, but it's been mangled by having the broken firing pin. But anyway, as you can see, it's pretty, you know, pretty much the same diameter and and wire thickness, probably of a bar, you know, one out of a pen. So um, I actually often, when I throw pens away, I often keep the springs for the gunsmithing. Um, so whether I can find one now is another thing of course. All right, so let's look in here. Let's see what is in here. Oh, look at that. So there we go. So that's the back part of the firing pin. You can see where it's broken off and you can actually also see, as I discussed in the video, um, that the end of it is the broken end, instead of being a rough broken end, it's peened flat because the tip was probably in there for quite a while before it actually ended up falling out and being lost. So, uh, so there's that. So we need to make another firing pin for this. Um, my stepson's got a shoot coming up in about two months. So he asked me to sort his gun out for him, which is what prompted this whole, this whole video. Uh, oh, I've been thinking of doing it for a while because I've, you know, I've collected the footage last time, but, um, but yeah, so uh, anyway, he did make this tool though last time, he sat down for about, he made it in one night, we were here, he lives down the road, and I said, oh, we need to make a tool for that, and he said, oh, and he took the gun home, measured it, sat down with a high tensile bolt and a couple of files, and he uh, sat down in front of the TV, and he actually made that in about three hours one evening, and it actually works, it fits perfectly. I was actually quite impressed. Um, all right, so if we look at this, good one. So that's what the spring kind of should look like. There we go. So at least we've got one to to use as a template. So um, anyway, so then if we go here, so this, interestingly enough, look at the back of this. That's interesting. So you see it's actually a little bit peened. This is made out of 4140 steel. But the back is a little bit peened. So, so I've just uh, separated the right and left one so I don't get confused. So um, our next job is to measure this, uh, this good striker firing pin. And then we'll turn up another one, identical.
Right, so here's all the dimensions of the uh, of the other firing pin that I used as a template. Now we've uh, we've done everything pretty much within uh, a couple of thou of all of these. The only bit here is this bit here is still about a millimeter and a half long. We have to bring it back to about 5.5 millimeters. So I'm just going to do that with a file. All right, so I've just um, found this pin. Let's have a look. And see what's in here. Oh, there's a spring there, look at that. It's a funny looking spring too. It's got uh, three lots of... Oops. See that? It's got three lots of... Uh, where the cores are all stuck together. But look at that, that is a perfect size. I'll get, I'll get rid of those things because I think they might actually affect the amount the firing pin can come forward. But I reckon if I cut it off either side of one of those little things and then use the bit in between I think that'll be perfect right I found some wire cutters so what I'll do is I'll cut that just there and I'll cut it just Yep. All right, I'll keep that other bit too, because you never know when that will come in handy. So there we go, so there's the original, the good spring, not the mangled one, and there's the one from the pen. So I think that'll do the job. It's slightly bigger diameter, probably about four mils, but um, uh, just I suppose what I've got to do is check that it goes inside the striker, that's inside the disc. That might be what the thing that pulls us up. I didn't think of that until just now. Oh no, that should go in. So, so yeah, the the pin should go there like that. Should go there like that. As long as that can. I've come to an issue. This one, this uh, pin doesn't quite go through the hole. So, because um, I based it on the other one, and I didn't. I mean, it's a couple of thousand bigger than the other one, but. Um, so interesting to see if the other one actually will go through but I'm going to have to turn that down just a touch more because it needs to obviously be a slight fit in that hole because that's where it comes out so um, let's just I'll just check this other one this is the right hand pin but the left hand oh yeah see so that one actually does go in so the holes the holes in the strikers are slightly this hole slightly smaller than the other one but that's all right i'll put that in there and i'll put the original spring in there and i'll just go and i'll quickly just take another thou or so off that and shall take the striker as well or the disc as well just get it so it's a slight fit i'm just checking this uh, new firing pin that i've made just in its hole uh, so it sits in the bottom of the hole fine, but one issue that I've noticed is if we look at this, see it's actually sitting slightly proud of the standing breech face, which it can't do. It needs to be just level or just, just underneath the level of it. So um, I was actually working on the protrusion through the disc, but um, uh, I'm going to have to just file it a little bit so it's just below the level there before I uh, install it with its disc. So I fold this off and uh, re-rounded it um, and I think I've got it just below the, uh, the level of the breech face there. You can see we've got full contact. No, we haven't. It still needs a touch more. Just a touch more. 
All right, so we'll try that again. All right, so that's below the level now. Last but not least, we come to our single shot uh, break open hammer style shotgun, of which there are a thousand different uh, types, just about every maker had one because um, they were just a utility gun that was sold widely to farmers um, especially. This is a copy of a Savage Model 24 um, and the Savage Model 24 actually came about when Savage took over the Stevens uh, firearms company back in the 30s uh, and it was actually a Stevens design. It was originally called the Stevens 22-410 because that's what it was. It was a 22 and 410 over and under combo gun. Uh, but that was actually just built on the frame of the, st the standard Stevens single shot um, shotguns of the time, which were available in 410, 20, 16 and 12 gauge. Um, and um, there was and if you look at the photos, I'll, I'll actually plug a photo in now so that you can have one of those old Stevens single barrel shotguns but if you just look at this the position of these pins the shape of this stock the general shape of everything you will recognize straight away that it's basically the same gun so I think all they've basically done apart from putting this apart from putting this little I'll show you a close up of that um, thing on, on the hammer is possibly this they might have made this breech face a bit higher to fit the two barrels and then of course there's two firing pins but as you can imagine if that was a bit lower and it was just the size of one barrel you just have one firing pin screw now I've replaced the I bought this this is a bit of a bargain I actually only paid $90 for this because it had a broken rifle firing pin which I was able to fix so I've actually got that in a separate whole video if you're interested but what I'm going to do is just get a little bit of footage out from that video splice it into this one just so to just to show the repair of that all right if we get some light in the right spot and we look in these firing pin holes uh, you can actually see that you can see the end of the uh, shotgun pin but you can see the 22 one uh, is not there the other thing I noticed about this is that that 22 firing pin hole is actually quite battered it's actually when you feel it it's actually raised so I think the actual tips broken off the pin and it's probably been sitting in there bashing sideways or whatever so um, I'll probably just dress that with a file uh, when um, before I put it back together the other thing I will do is I'll probably when I make this pin I'll actually make it a little bit oversized and I'll, I'll uh, try to get it because if I make it to the same size as the other pin I suspect it's going to be too small in the hole now if you look at the way this is designed I'll just get this over here so I've got the hammer back so you can see both the firing pins I'll get some uh, light on there See both the firing pins, you can see the shotgun one's very dirty in there. I'm going to pull the whole thing apart eventually and clean it. But there's the back of the top pin. There we go. So that actually fits fits in that slot really well. Um, so, because it's probably going to be quite tight this. Alright, so there's the pin. I just got it out. So you can see the broken end of it. It's actually just broken right where the thin bit goes and then you can see it has this uh, this flat part which is where that pin obviously just holds it so the pin can go forward and back but it can't come right out so um, that should be reasonably easy to um, replicate I think now there should be a spring 
according to my information there should be a spring in here so let's just have a look and see what we can see it's just hard to work out where the camera is on these phones um, actually I can think I can see it in there see the spring in there and um, let's have a look I'll see if I can both film and get it out at the same time one thing it's worth getting if you're doing gunsmithing work I use these all the time is a little pair of medical hemostats because there's a multitude of things there it is where is it there it is there's the spring So I've got this pretty close now, so I'm just going to see how this goes. So that actually goes all the way into there, but still a bit tight. So, uh, so I just need to take a few of those machining marks off the uh, off this, and it should then slide in nicely. So I'll just do that now. There we go so we've uh, made our rough uh, firing pin there so um, it's a bit over length which is always ma worth making it a bit longer you can always file it shorter but you can't make them longer um, now I'll just I'll just test that in the gun before I go any further all right so basically we've got the dimensions of the pin uh, how we want them and um, now the only two jobs to do are to um, cut that slot in the side of the pin using the Dremel tool. Uh, that's where the uh, firing pin retainer engages to stop it going too far in or too far out. Um, and then the last operation we'll do is to just grind the tip of the pin a little bit to get it into the shape of a rimfire firing pin all right there we go our firing pin is finished as far as i can see it's time to see what i've done is actually cut a little so i've got a little triangular uh rectangular bit on the end like most rimfire rifles all right so the job's <coughs> completed now uh, I cleaned out that firing pin hole, polished the back of the pin, I've cold blued it. Um, so, um, right here we are at the range.
No problem. Try another one. So that's the top firing pin here. Uh, now this bottom shotgun firing pin, I must admit I've never actually bothered to take it out. So we might even have a go at doing that now. Right, and let's undo this. They're usually, because these screws don't go, all they do is really go into a retaining notch in the firing pin. They're often not actually screwed in very tightly. And push that firing pin. Oh. There it is. So you can see it's a very simple design. Um, so and you can see it's handmade, even the, the flat bit you can see it's been hand filed, it's not actually very straight, but it does the job. So um it just stops the firing pin from that little that little shoulder just stops the firing pin from coming out. So that's why when the uh, when you screw up the screw up the the uh, screw against it, it just has to sit there like that and stop the firing pin from coming back and falling out. But you obviously can't screw it in tight because it will actually it will actually impinge on the firing pin. So when you screw it in, you screw it into it goes a little bit tight, and then you just back it off a bit. So you confidence behind that so yeah so that's basically it for one of these guns they're very simple so um, of course when you put it back in you just got to make sure the flat bit is against the uh, against the bit where the um, the little screw is so, so you can see the firing pins now sticking out through the breech face there so we can put this in and just screw it up all right so that's gone up tight there and you can see if I try to push the firing pin it's all sticky so we'll just back that off a little bit And the firing pin now moves freely. If I hang there, it comes out, and then can you see that? I push it's really push, push it back in, so it's retained. So that pretty much concludes this video about replacing sh uh, strikers or firing pins in break action shotguns or rifles, for that matter. Uh, so yeah, it was designed so that if someone's got a um, a gun that's got a broken firing pin, well A, first of all, that they can diagnose that it's got a broken firing pin, maybe take it out and have a look at it, uh, and then B, work out how to actually replace it, get another one. Now, uh, Brownells and places like that do have boxes of sort of firing pins, they're obviously just common sizes. Um, so if you don't, you know, a lot of people don't have a label, I understand that. So if you don't, you may get away with buying some, some like that and even just filing them to shape, to work. Um, alternatively, what you can do is take them out like I have, draw a picture like I did, measure it up, just need a pair of any calipers or, or, or um, dial calipers, measure up all the dimensions, and then you can probably just go to any machine shop and just say to them, can you make me one of these out of 4140? And, decent machinist I'm, I'm a really crap machinist so usually it takes me two or three goes because i make a boo-boo or whatever but i kind of managed to make one so a skilled machinist could probably sit down and knock up one of those firing pins in about 15 20 minutes so um you know it's probably within the realms of, of uh, being affordable uh, as far as you know just get a replacement one made so anyway if you like this video please subscribe to my channel and please push the like button and until next time thanks for watching